Hello everyone, welcome back to AeroHub and welcome to the series of lectures in aerospace structures. In the previous lecture we discussed about design of riveted joint and in this lecture we will discuss about pure tension field beam or it is also called Wagner beam for airframe applications. And what do you mean by pure tension field beam? It is mainly any beam which can carry load in terms of tension that is any beam structure. A beam which can carry load which can carry load in terms of in terms of tensile load in terms of tensile load okay that is the this is the main definition of a pure tension field beam this the main application of pure tensile tension field beam came for spar application for airframe structures and we will see what do you mean by tensile tension field beam now imagine a thin plate and we have a struct a and struct b it is like a cable okay we have cable we will have a cable structure a and b and this cable structure is um, connected at the uh, that both end of this particular plate okay this is a plate this is a plate and we have two cable a and b which is connected at the two end of the plate okay now i am applying a shear load of capital v at the one end of the cable one end of the plate now you can see after some time due to the application of the shear load this entire plate will deform you can see here due to the application of the shear load the entire plate will deform and deflect in the upward direction okay because we are applying the load upwards okay now what happens here we have the two cable here a and cable b and cable a will be undergoing compression the cable a will be undergoing compression and the cable b will be undergoing tension okay now if you imagine a thread if you imagine a thread if i take a thread you can see here when i am applying a compressive load the, the cable will be this thread is uh, similar to a cable and the cable the thread will be unstable okay if you apply a tensile load this cable will be in a stable manner okay the stability of the cable is uh, very much in the tensile load side when compared to the compressive side therefore the entire load is transferred to to the plate in terms of tension to the cable a okay so the tensile load tensile load carried by the cable will be equal to the applied shear load capital v okay so the entire load is taken as entire load is taken as tensile load entire load is taken as tensile load by the cable okay so this type of structure which you can take the entire load in terms of tension is called tension field beam i repeat a structure which you can carry each and every load in terms of tension is called tension field beam now we will see you can see here in figure number 3 the, we have the cable b here and the entire load is carried by transferred to the cable as tension and this cable b is in tension and it is also in a stable state okay so the entire load is transferred to cable b as tension and uh, this cable is actually called a tension field beam okay now we will see how this uh, beam is applied in the airframe applications now you can see an example for pure tension field beam which is applied in the airframe application especially for the spar you can see here if you take a section of an wing we have an airfoil section and the airfoil section will be compressed of maybe uh, compressed of 
this spar we have two spar here front spar and rear spar and the spar will be responsible to avoid, avoid the twisting of the wing and the example for a pure tension field beam is the spar structure okay for exam mainly the web of the spar will carry the load as mainly as tension when are when the wing is subjected to lift load you can see when the wing is subjected to lift load the entire load is carried by the web of the spar as a tension field okay that is we have seen that in the last uh, section uh, a beam which can carry entire load as tension okay similarly when i am applying the lift load the beam the wing will be undergoing lift load upwards therefore the spar which is supposed to provide the stability of the wing will subjected to both bending and torsion load and the uh, web of the spar will be taking the load as the tension field okay especially tensile load we can see here this is the perfect tension field beam and i am applying a load capital p downwards here and this part is called the thin plate and this thin plate will carry shear load will carry the shear load will carry the shear load and we have two flanges two horizontal flanges upper this is the upper flange and this is the lower flange this upper flange and lower flange will carry the bending load bending load means the combination of tension and compression and this are called vertical stiffness these are called vertical stiffness and this will provide the buckling strength for the entire beam or entire structure okay that is it will reduce the critical length for buckling and finally it will improve the entire strength of the beam entire strength of the beam that's why we are using vertical stiffness we have discussed about what is the stiffness here in the case in the case of an airframe in the case of an aircraft wing you can see an airfoil section and you, you have already studied about we will be using hat section on the upper half and we will be using z section on the lower half okay so stiffness mainly improve the buckling strength of the wing as well as it will reduce the critical length for buckling that's why we are using stiffness similarly we will be using more number of stiffness in the tension field beam also to improve the buckling strength of the wing okay and we are applying a load capital p downwards and this is the height of the with a tension field beam and you can see that this uh, particular beam is in the shape of an i section always remember that the spar will be in case of in the shape of an i section which is uh, because the section modulus of i section is very high when comparing to all other sections and this is the spar cap and this one is the uh, this upper flap spar cap this is the lower spar cap and this is the thin web and these are the rivets so you can see here this plus symbol this plus symbol is actually the intermediate rivets okay this rivets will connect the spar uh, the vertical stiffness as well as the flanges to the thin plate i repeat the rivet will connect the uh, upper flange and lower flange as well as the stiffness to the thin plate okay this is all about the construction of the pure tension field beam you can see when i am applying a load here the entire uh, thin plate will take the load as tension okay we will see about that in the next lecture and we'll see what is the maximum load or maximum stress that can carry by a tension field beam and we will study about diagonal tension diagonal tension tension in the next lecture okay hope you are doing well thank you for listening take care